This is a an example of one of the common ways to misinterpret statistical results. So in this case, you imagine you have a friend who claims to have magical powers and be able to guess uh, the color of a playing card uh, without you showing it to your friend. So the cards are either black or red and you draw them in order. So first, the first card you draw is black, and your friend guesses black, so that means uh, the guess was correct. And then you draw a second card from the deck. It's also black. Your friend guesses red. In that case, it's incorrect, so I'll put a zero and then you draw a red card, guess red, correct, we'll put a one, and so on. You keep doing that and keep recording your data. And then at the end, you uh, check what proportion correct there was and uh, build a confidence interval, in particular, a 90% confidence level, confidence interval. Now in this case, since there's two options, black or red, if you were to just guess randomly, you would uh, get it right with probability one half. So the true sort of population probability in this case would be equal to 0.5. So we'll mark that over here with this line here. And then imagine after you go and compute your confidence interval, it's actually from 0.52 up to 0.61. So all of the values in your interval are actually higher than 0.5. So your friend looks at this and says, ha, huh, I've proved that I have magical powers because if I were guessing randomly, my P would be 0.5 my uh, correct guess probability. But as you can see, uh, all of the values in the confidence interval are bigger than 0.5. So I'm able to guess correct more than half the time. You reply, I think maybe you're misinterpreting what we mean by a 90% confidence interval. So you remember that what that means from this frequentist before sampling perspective is that I have a 90% probability of getting a sample that uh, will generate an interval that does contain the true value. But conversely, that means there's also a 10% probability that I get a sample that does not contain the true value. So you decide to go back and repeat your experiment. And sure enough, what you find is when you get other intervals, so here's 0.5, the random guessing, uh, you go back and you get other intervals. And uh, indeed, none of them end up containing the true P. As you can remember, if we were to sort of repeat this over and over in the repeated sampling. If we did it a hundred times, then maybe 10 of those intervals would be like this one and not contain 0.5, assuming the friend is really just guessing randomly and the true P is 0.5. And then the other 90 out of 100 would be like this, where they did contain the true P equals 0.5. So it's important to remember, even though 90% sounds like it's close to 100%, it is not actually 100%. So it's always possible that our interval does not contain the true value.